Pink Panther S has seen a really huge meteoric rise over the past couple of years from her really soft-spoken pop approach that I think has been pretty refreshing, actually, despite the fact that I think her influences are quite clear, particularly from a British pop perspective. I think she's pulling from 2000s aesthetics pretty very cl clearly and as plain as day as it could get, but I don't think it's necessarily a hindrance to her music. And for me, I've actually been enjoying what she's doing quite a bit and have found her inclusion in the modern pop day, in the modern pop game, I guess you could call it, as being a nice one. It's been good to see. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the mixtape. I thought the mixtape was good. I just felt that we were hitting a point where nearly every track was kind of kind of doing the same thing. I was still a fan of her and I still wanted to see where she'd take her sound. And here we are with the debut full-length album, Heaven Knows. And the Lord knows this one's a good one. He'll be bumping this one in the whip. I tell you right now, those Heaven parties are going to be going crazy because this right here is a great album. And an album that took a few listens for me to reach that decision, actually. Because at first I was enjoying it. I thought it was good. But part of me was wondering, hmm... Has she taken her sound far enough? Is she trying to incorporate some new things? And is it doing enough to kind of separate itself from her previous stuff? And the answer might be no to that question, but ultimately when I was listening to this album more and more and more, I was like, that kind of doesn't matter because at the end of the day, what I am hearing here is really catchy and really enjoyable and I can't really complain all that much. I think a good place to start would be Boys A Liar Part 2, although it's not something I tend to do with album reviews. Um, I usually start at the beginning, but I think this track being a bonus track um, on this album is a good place to start just to kind of get it out of the way, not in a negative way because I think it's a great track, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it should be on this. It is a bonus track, of course, but it also is a huge pivotal point in her career that I think took her sound on a more global level. Of course, Ice Spice being on it too added a totally new dimension to the point where she actually came out in an interview recently saying she didn't even like the original one all that much, but she loved the track once this remix came together. And I can totally see why. I think a lot of people would feel the same too because of how big it ended up being. But yeah, they kind of ended up handily helping each other's career take off in different ways, really. I think Ice Spice showed that she was a little bit better than some people were giving her credit for. And then, of course, Pink Panther S just went a little bit more global in her sound too. So it's a pretty huge moment, and I think it's good to see it on this album. Just as a closing track, though, you kind of have to ignore it, really, because of the closing track that you do get, which we will get to, trust me. Easily, easily one of the best popular hit songs of the year. A spoiler already for that video that will come probably about December time where I rank the best hit songs of the year. You've got one in the bag already there if you're watching this review before you watch that video. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic track. Absolutely love it. It's so fun. It's silly. It's quirky. I have a lot of fun with it. But let's get onto the full track list because another life kicks this off with Rayma on here too, who is a huge name at the moment. I think she's done a pretty good job of, over the past couple of years actually, of bringing on interesting features for her tracks. It always feels like people that shouldn't work and then you hear the track and you're like, well, why did I ever doubt Pink Panther S? Another great collaboration that doesn't make it onto this album, by the way, is the one with Sam Gellitry. I mean, that track is so mind boggling to me. That came out last year. That's a great song. And um, yeah, you wouldn't think pa Sam Gellitry and Pink Panther S would have ever come together, but it's worked so well. And I think Rayma here works really nicely too. I think the drum and bass incorporation is fantastic. I li I'm liking a lot of artists at the moment that just keep dabbling in the drum and bass sound. It seems to be a common thing. Tinashe has done it recently as well. And every time it kind of pops up, I'm like, I like that this artist is doing this because it feels quite different for them. But yeah, Rayma doesn't really sound like Raymer on this track. If anything, it sounds more like Playboy Carti. It's a little odd, but I do think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great track anyway. Really great opener. Uh, True Romance, just so unbelievably catchy. It's ridiculous. The aisle being similar in terms of the catchiness and the praise that I'm going to kind of throw onto it, but also um, it's just so cute with the lyrics. I think she has a really good 
way of kind of doing that Carly Rae Jepsen thing of being the kind of hopeless romantic, ooh, uh, is he really into me? Does he really like me? Can I really get his attention type thing that she throws on a lot of her tracks? And I think Pink Panther S does a similar thing here with that hopeless romanticism. I, I like the, the lyrical narrative of this track, even if it is a little cheesy in some ways. Carrying on with those features though, we may as well keep going with them. We've got Kalela on here, which is super unexpected. I think her most recent album is Aesthetically, though, does sound similar in places to what Pink Panther S is doing. So actually, the collaboration makes a little more sense than you'd initially expect it to. Um, but for me, on this track, I actually think she needs to be a bit more prominent. I don't think it's her fault. I think it's just the way the track's structured that doesn't really give her a spotlight feature. I think it could have been a lot better than uh, it ended up being. I still think the song is good though. I just think in terms of what she brings to the table, I would have just liked to have seen a bit more of like a big sort of like focus spotlight onto her when she is on the track because I just don't feel it has that. And then of course you've got Central C, which feels definitely like a forced feature for me. Like I'm not saying that Pink Panther S didn't want to do this, but I wouldn't be surprised if the label was like, no, let's get that big name on this album because we need what we need that one track that's gonna go mega viral again, like Boys the Liar Part 2. It won't get as big as that for sure. I can guarantee that. It just will not be as big as that. It has actually charted in the past week on the UK charts though and um, so of course Central C being that name has that kind of impact but in terms of what he brings to the table I just don't get what he's doing I mean that track last year that went super viral with that awful opening line which I'm not going to repeat because I just don't want to give it attention to be honest I, I just find him like obnoxious honestly I think he's got stage presence I think he's got a good delivery but in terms of UK rappers I, I really don't get the hype and I think he just needs to sharpen up his lines because a lot of the time they just sound really bad and yeah I guess people are eating it up but in terms of longevity I kind of worry for him because I think a lot of his lines in the long run will just kind of start to get mocked and mocked and more and more mocked to the point where people just will not take him seriously. I mean, this verse isn't terrible, actually. He, he, you know, he has that risk it for a biscuit line, which is just a bit cringe, but he isn't awful on this track. He just kind of sounds like he was added on for the sake of being added on. Because this track is fantastic without him, I think. I think this is possibly the best track on the album if it weren't for that feature. Um, like, it sounds so good. The vocal melodies are so on point. The instrumentation is just pulling right directly from the 2000s. It's so, so earwormy. It's ridiculous. I think this song could have been amazing. But I just think once he comes in, I'm just like, yeah, you're just here for the sake of it, really. In terms of negatives, though, that might be one of the only negatives I have on the whole album. And it's not even a massive one because I still think the rest of the track sounds that good. So we're talking high quality here. I think Blue is a great track. I couldn't believe... When I heard that interpolation of examples kickstarts and I was kind of questioning if you're an American listener of Pink Panther S, you know, do you even recognize what this is interpolating here? Because I don't think kickstarts or example as an artist ever really went global. It was just a very UK thing, very 2009, like it feels so of its time, but it still has Kind of sounds pretty good to this day, I would say. But yeah, my God, did not hear her interpolating that anywhere. Like, I just did not see it coming at all. She kind of didn't really need to do it. But the the track itself, again, is so well produced. The kind of R's that come through as well sound great. She just is so on point on this track. She just has such a knack for a melody and really runs with it and it just ends up being incredible every time. And then to close out the album, you've got Capable of Love, which for me is one of the biggest statements of her career. It really shows that she can take her sound to a totally new place and nail it as well. It's kind of like her version of like a next level Charlie really, where it's just like, yeah, this is where my sound could go. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm all for it because this track is sublime. The guitars on this track are really, really spectacular. The drum breaks that come through as well. It just feels so monumental. This is the one right here of her career. It just feels huge. It's an absolutely spellbinding closer of a track. Up there in the kind of conversations of like 
albums with the best song that closes out the album because they're kind of rare like most albums don't have the best track as the last track but you can add this one to the conversation my friends because this is just on another level for Pink Panther S really goes to show that actually the sound that she is playing with can be stretched out further to new levels in places that you wouldn't really expect and kind of goes to show that the artistry can keep going for Pink Panther S. There is more to come. There is more to what meets the eye with her sound here. And this track proves that massively. Yeah, I absolutely love this album. It took a few listens for me to get to that point, but I really do think this is great. I think it's one of the best pop albums of the year. In terms of mainstream albums, this is one of the best mainstream albums of the year. Although saying that, I was noticing this past week that actually in terms of like pop stands and conversations between kind of like average casual music listeners, I wasn't really seeing much about this album. And I was kind of like surprised. I was like, this girl is huge. Like she's had some massive hits over the past few years. Um, she's on the rise. Like there is a mainstream quality to her here. And yet I'm not really seeing a great deal of conversation about her. And then I looked at the charts and she charted at 28 on the albums chart. And I was looking above. And there are a few artists that I personally didn't recognize at all charting way higher than her with debut albums. Like their, their debut charting week that were released on the same day. And that's not to have any slight on those artists, just because you haven't heard of them doesn't make them not good. But just when you think a name like Pink Panther S is bigger than what it seems, um, you just think this would have been top five nailed on, maybe even a number one charting album, to be honest. But yeah, that is pretty surprising, kind of wondering if I've, I've overblown how big she actually is. Is it the brand? Is it the personality that isn't as, I guess, commercial? as maybe other artists, like she doesn't brand herself in the way a Dua Lipa does, for example. Is that why she's not catching on as much with a full album? I don't quite get it. I, I really don't know. I would have expected this album to be much bigger. And it's kind of sad to see that it didn't chart higher, but it's great nevertheless. Eight out of 10 from me, definitely gonna be on my year end list. And there's definitely gonna be appearances from songs on my year end list as well from this album, because there's so much to love. So earwormy, just really well-made pop music that I can't really say no to. That is it from me though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's not so good? Let me know why. Uh, tell me what I should review next as well. Have a good day and subscribe. Check out my Patreon and goodbye.